So in this video, we're going to explore what do you need to do to experience life in the now? What steps do you need to take to experience this amazing thing that is always there waiting for you? Hello, this is David Greenwood of Your Life in the Now, helping you to move into the now to create that space, that ability you have to feel that transformation starting within you because it's what you deserve and what you desire. So in this video, we're going to talk just a little bit about what steps can you take to be in the now. We talked about in this first video about what's it like to be in the now. And in the last video, we talked more about some of the benefits of being in the now. So let's talk about what do you need to do to get there? To summarize the first step is there has to be an awareness, a moment that you take to move into this, this sense, this presence. Now, you don't need to be healthy in your ego. It will help, but you don't need it. I did it 19 and I did not have a healthy ego at all. And it really was very beneficial for me because it lit that fire within me that kept burning and kept reminding me and bringing me back to it until I finally was able to move forward and find a way to heal the old wounded ego, which changed my life forever. But that's another story. So you don't necessarily need to be healthier, but you do need to be able to take some time and focus on it. Now, there has to be some interest within you to want something greater than you, a dissatisfaction, a great pain in your life, an unhappiness. Eckhart Tolle talks about this quite a bit, how in his life he just felt everything was coming apart. He was undergoing this tremendous pain and that helped him move beyond that egoic state and experience this oneness, snapped into it. Krishnamurti was really pretty much born without much of an ego. It was a little different for him. For you and I, we probably have a good ego, a good amount of ego. And I don't want you to have to go through the pain and suffering that Eckhart Tolle did. You might. I would be happy if you don't have to. And what I discovered for me was in that moment when I first had that experience, it happened for me because I had an interest in doing it. I had this intense desire to understand why my thoughts were continuing to hold me back. And I'm not going to fully go into the whole process right here and now because you may want to experience it for yourself and I don't want to derail that for you. But the bottom line was, in that moment, nothing else mattered to me in the world than finding the answer. Finding the answer as to why my conditioned mind was holding me back. Why it was there at all. And all my energy, everything, all my focus was on that. And I think that's the key. That when you have all of your interest and attention, it's like you come to this point when there's no distractions, everything is like hovering on the edge, this energetic focus on understanding this one key element. And all my interest, everything was on that. And when I saw it, it dropped away on its own. And that's like Krishnamurti said, when you see the truth, naturally the resistance drops away and it's there. So we don't try to get into now consciousness through an effort of will or ego. That's ridiculous. It doesn't work. That's just ego driven. And I find far too many people come in and they're spiritual beings who are letting their ego have spiritual experiences. They're very egoic. They're filled with anger, frustration, uh, incredible ego <laughs> and that ego is so proud of itself for being spiritual. It doesn't, it's not spiritual at all. It's just the ego trying to be spiritual, trying to control it. That's not it. So we cannot use a will, an effort of will or ego to get to it. We get to it through the understanding of how important it is to be sane, to understand an issue, to understand ourself. The very energy put into being in, the, in, this, in this awakening, this experience of learning and growing and understanding ourself will naturally free you. Again, we don't, it's really hard, I know, because when I first had the experience, I thought, well, how do I go back and have it again? 
I can't. I couldn't. Because then the ego wants to re-experience it. It didn't work. And it shouldn't work. Because the ego can never experience the oneness. The ego is the known. It's based on everything you've ever done. Everything that has been created. It's a part of your mind. It has nothing to do with this otherness, this presence around you. It's entirely different. You can't will your way into this otherness. It has to drop away naturally. So this intent, this energy, this focus to understand yourself, to learn, to grow, will naturally guide you into this. So maybe I'm doing you a disservice by explaining or, or describing this otherness, this presence. But I find that that gets people's attention. When people start to hear how amazing it can be, at least they put energy toward it. No one seems to be interested in when I just talk about understanding yourself. It's like, yeah, yeah, some other day. <laughs> but when I talk about this amazing, joyous presence that's all around us all the time waiting for us just to be in the moment, that gets people's attention. And then the next thing I have to tell them is, no, you can't have it. Because <laughs> the you that's watching is not going to be the you that gets it. I remember going to a bookstore in Seattle back when I was in high school. I lived in Bremerton, came across the ferry to a little bookstore in the bottom of Pike Place Market. Probably not there anymore. That little bookstore is probably long gone. And I was just led, what's about what I can say, to a book that was on the shelf, picked it up and started reading it. I opened it up and all I remember was the one page I opened up to. Now I only remember really three of the main lines, but it said, desire only that which is within you desire only that which is beyond you, desire only that which you will never achieve. And that stuck with me for some reason. The first two were pretty easy. Okay, desire only that which is within you. That makes sense. Okay, desire only that which is beyond you. Okay, it's something that I can maybe get later and it's not quite here yet. But desire only that which I could never achieve. I had no idea what that meant. Why would I go after something that I could never get? And finally, of course, I understood the spiritual principle that the you that was reading that, the me that was reading it, was not going to be the me or the you that was going to be there. It was going to be another awakening of another part, if you will. Those are just words, but desire only that which you will never achieve. I will never achieve it. The I, the ego, will never achieve it. But it is there and it transforms you. And so when you have that energy, that focus, that attention, that desire to change your life, to understand your life, it really will make a difference. Now, when I was younger, I was interested in a lot of different spiritual pursuits and psychic phenomena and all the rest. And then I picked up a book by Krishnamurti and thinking it was going to be the same, but he was talking about changing the way you think and, and watching your thoughts and everything. And I thought, this is nothing like I've ever read before. What's he? He's asking questions I never even thought about. That's the problem. We don't think about those type of questions. We just enjoy life. We, we are focused on entertainment and understanding things from how it makes us feel good and everything without ever understanding why we do things. The very questioning is what led me to that awakening. Yes, we need people to help us wake up, but we have to do it on our own. It's nothing anybody can do for you, but people can help you along the way, point you in the right direction, and keep you from making mistakes. Show you what it isn't. And again, it doesn't require an effort of will. It doesn't require an explanation. It's beyond all of it. But it's the most amazing, sacred thing you can ever imagine. It's always there. It's just amazing that, anyway, that people aren't experiencing it. Once you do, you will know what I'm talking about. If you haven't already. If you're probably watching this, maybe you haven't yet. People who have are probably out enjoying it on their own. So how do you get to it? Well, first you want to have that energy, that intent, that desire to change your life. And then it helps to be able to understand there's going to be a part that's going to try to hold you back and sabotage you and keep you from going into it. That's where someone like me can help you. This is what I enjoy doing the most is helping people to remove the negative aspects and their subconscious mind, that resisted part of you, helping you to move forward, to overcome its resistance. And as you do, you'll find more and more your mind is quiet. And with that healthier ego that you become, 
That healthier ego does not block you from enjoying this experience. It allows you to do it, whereas the old, unhealthy, worried, conditioned mind tries to block you, wants to stay in control. It doesn't trust anything outside of itself. Sometime later, I'll tell you about my experience of my ego coming upon this and what happened to it as a result. But believe me, it tries its best to ignore it or it's ignorant of its existence, of the existence of this amazing presence and otherness around us. So when you're able to become healthier, it allows you to open up in whole new ways and then naturally and easily you'll find the experiences come. For me, every day I come to work, usually get to work about seven o'clock, I'm usually the first one here, and I walk up to the front doorstep and I just stop, turn around, look at the trees, I listen to the birds, and it's there, this presence, this otherness is just palpably everywhere. It's like you're folded within it. And you open up and your thoughts end and you're there. And in that moment there is this unbelievable joy and happiness and loving connection. And my words are not going to capture it. I'm doing the best I can to tell you my experience fills me up and I start my day from that place and starting your day by connecting with this oneness, this presence will change your life day by day. We're human beings. Even if our ego is healthier, we still make mistakes. We still screw up. You learn how to grow and change and keep moving forward, doing the best you can. Changing your life, changing the world, changing humanity for the better is what we're all supposed to do. So if you take these few steps, first, have an interest in it, in watching yourself, looking at your thoughts, understanding why you think, why you have prejudices, why you have worries and fears, how we treat others based on the screen of our prejudices, the racial prejudices toward men, toward women, toward different religions, whatever it is. Self-awareness, that energy of that focus will allow you to open up to this and then more and more begin to work on taking away the resistance so that it's so much easier and more natural. I don't want you to go through 20 years of wandering in a wilderness like I did before I finally found a way and had the energy to move beyond that negative subconscious mind. You're going to do it your own way. But I just like helping people to get there sooner. We need you to be the best. We need you to experience this for yourself by being this person naturally. The experience alone, being in the moment, is just the result of being this amazing you. That you are being that modern mystic. Being in the world but not of it. Doing practical life. It's practical spirituality. When you're in the moment, you're there. When you work, you work. When you play, you play. It's okay. Don't be afraid of it. You don't have to end your relationship or go sit on a mountainside somewhere. Be in life. Connect with other people. You're going to be unique. There's so many people out there that are talking about this. Just get a sense and then do it on your own. Don't become a follower of anybody else. Don't go keep running after people. Krishnamurti was always saying how Almost disappointing it was to see the same people year after year coming to see him. It wasn't about him. If you read about his life, you'll understand that. Perhaps that's another time we'll talk more about the individuals, amazing people like Krishnamurti and Eckhart Tolle and others. So for now, just, if you will, take some time and just watch your thoughts. And don't watch your thoughts to begin to meditate, just see the movement of them how they appear, why they appear. Begin to understand it. And of course, there are books by many of these illumined beings that will help you along the way. The idea is, this is what we're meant to be. This is the unfolding of life, of you feeling how amazing we are connected at all levels with everything. So hopefully this will help you to want to think about it, to go into it, to explore it, because it really is an amazing thing when you do it, and it's worth it. 
I'll talk with you next time on your life in the now.